Muslim women and girls are being taken as captives and forced to marry Taliban jihadis or to become their sex slaves. Meanwhile, the rest of the Muslim world is strangely silent. As the U.S. withdraws troops from Afghanistan, the Taliban is yet again showing us what Islam plans for the rest of the world. Taliban jihadis are rapidly taking over the country. When they conquer a town, they go to the local imams and ask for lists of all the unmarried women and girls in the town so that these unmarried women and girls can be divided up among the jihadis. And the imams gladly comply. The Daily Mail reports. Taliban fighters are going door to door and forcibly marrying girls as young as 12 and forcing them into sex slavery as they seize vast swaths. Yes, I know some of you say swaths and some of you say swathes. There's no agreed upon pronunciation anymore, so get over yourselves, you freaking pronunciation Nazis. Of Afghanistan from government forces. Jihadist commanders have ordered imams in areas they have captured to bring them lists of unmarried women aged from 12 to 45 for their soldiers to marry because they view them as kanimat or spoils of war to be divided up among the victors. Fighters have then been going door to door to claim their prizes, even looking through the wardrobes of families to establish the ages of girls before forcing them into a life of sexual servitude. Now, as bad as that sounds, notice that the Taliban, for the moment at least, has a minimum age requirement of 12 for the girls they're taking as spoils of war. This means that even a group as sick and evil and depraved as the Taliban is still better than their prophet, who married a six-year-old girl and had sex with her when she was nine. I guess this is about as close as Islam gets to moral progress. The women and girls' brutal treatment is just the latest sign of Afghanistan's military collapse, which has prompted the Afghan president to sack his top commander. One female journalist described fleeing a city in northern Afghanistan, which she did not name, and going into hiding with her uncle for fear the Islamists would hunt her down and execute her. The 22-year-old said she fled under the noses of Taliban gunmen while disguised beneath a burqa and went with her unclear her unclear, her uncle, get an editor, Daily Mail, went with her uncle to a nearby village, but was forced to flee again after informants told the militants of her presence. Now holed up in a remote location somewhere in the country's north, she said she fears for her life and the safety of her family. Will I ever go home? Will I see my parents again? Where will I go? How will I survive? She said. Meanwhile, terrified locals who fled the city of Kunduz captured by the Taliban last week, have told of reprisal attacks carried out by jihadist fighters who hunted down anyone linked to the government and beheaded or executed them. The Taliban has now captured nine of Afghanistan's 34 provincial capitals and placed most of the country's largest cities under siege in a lightning-fast assault that has seen government forces largely capitulate. That's strange. I thought that Islam only had a tiny minority of extremists. Odd how this tiny minority of extremists is somehow able to take over entire countries. In areas that the Islamists have captured, women have been barred from going to school, working, or leaving their homes without a permit, activists have warned. Yes, ladies, if you want an education or a career, get out of Afghanistan while you still can. Last month, reports emerged that fighters had ordered imams and tribal elders to prepare lists of all women aged 15 to 45 who were unmarried or widowed so they could be married to their fighters. But writing for Bloomberg, columnist Ruth Pollard said that has now extended down to girls as young as 12. Now the Taliban are going door to door in some areas, compiling lists of women and girls aged between 12 and 45 years for their fighters to forcibly marry, she wrote. Taliban fighters are permitted to do this under their strict interpretation of Islam, which views women as khanis, or commodities, according to Omar Sadr, professor of politics at the American University of Afghanistan. 
That means following a battle, women are treated as kanimat, or spoils of war, to be divided up among the victors. I wonder where they got that idea. They don't even have to marry them. It is a form of sex slavery, he said, adding that it also constitutes a form of ethnic cleansing as other cultures are forcibly assimilated into the Taliban's Pashtun group. Assessments of the security situation are increasingly grim, with U.S. intelligence sources warning the heavily defended capital of Kabul, one of the few cities not currently under attack by the Taliban, could fall in as little as a month, handing control of the country back to the Islamists. So it looks like Afghanistan will soon be under the control of the tiny minority of extremists once again. The United States of America, the most powerful nation on the planet, just spent two decades fighting this tiny minority of extremists. And yet, after two decades of this tiny minority of extremists standing their ground against the most powerful nation on earth, the tiny minority of extremists is still there, and apparently stronger than ever. Since the United States couldn't really defeat the Taliban, all the U.S. did was basically slow them down for a while, I guess we'll just have to wait for all the peace-loving, freedom-loving, democracy-loving Muslims of the world to rise up and unite against the tiny minority of extremists who are subjugating and raping and beheading their fellow Muslims. What's that? The peace-loving, freedom-loving, democracy-loving Muslims are too busy complaining about Islamophobia to do anything whatsoever to stop the tiny minority of extremists? Priorities, am I right? It is back finally. It is back finally. This is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?